minus 10. Landing a man on the moon. Eight. Returning in south to the south. Made in the start. Right away, Houston. Minus 10. Landing a man uh, on the moon. Eight. Returning in south to the six. 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 Made in the start. Right away, Houston. Minus 10. Landing a man uh, on the moon. Eight. And returning in south to the six. 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 Made in the start. Right away, Houston. Minus 10. Landing a man uh, on the moon. Eight. And returning in south to the six. Six. Made yep. it to the start. Right away, Houston. Minus 10. Landing a man uh, on the moon. Eight. And returning in south to the six. 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 Made yep. in the start. Right away, Houston.
These small rovers have uh, quite a few differences from, from prior robots that we've sent to other planets. The Sojourner rover was designed just to move about and explore and did not have the ability to, to manipulate the terrain in any way. Uh, we have here a vehicle that can scoop and dig and, and transport material uh, across the surface, and that is essential for digging holes. Uh, digging holes is very important because we wanted to be able to uh, find out what's underneath the surface. Prior robot explorers of other planets, such as the Sojourner rover that explored part of Mars in 1997, um, did not have the ability to manipulate the terrain in any way. And, and this vehicle, for the first time, offers the ability to dig and scoop and transport material. It has, a, uh, it has a little scoop that it can use to, uh, to lift material, to e extract material from the soil, uh, and then it can lift that over its head and dump it in the bucket, which forms the main body of the vehicle. The vehicle can then drive somewhere else, uh, and, and using the scoop can, in fact, flip itself over uh, to dump that scoop or to recover if it ever gets flipped over accidentally. Uh, I can recover by using the scoop to uh, right itself. So that is a unique feature of this vehicle that, um, that it in fact has this so-called jump rope maneuver where the scoop can go all the way around the body and uh, use it to right itself even when it's lying on its side. These rovers would be used to, uh, for example, take apart a a, uh, an ancient hot springs on the surface of Mars if, if one were found. Uh, on Yellowstone Park, there are hot springs which have very exotic forms of life that are unknown anywhere else in, on Earth. And we would expect that the possibility might exist that, that if life ever existed on Mars, it might have existed in, in a place like a, a hot spring. So if we found evidence of such a thing today, we could take it apart very much like an archaeological dig using these vehicles and uh, understand how it works and also uh, find any possible fossil life that might be in it. Another example of how these vehicles might be used is to, uh, is to support the creation of a base on Mars for future human occupancy. The uh, habitat would definitely need to be buried for radiation protection and that is most easily accomplished by digging a hole and putting the habitat in the hole and then covering it up. Uh, these vehicles would be uh, very good for that kind of a task and lots of other things like putting in utility trenches to the power supply and so on. The uh, vehicles are made very small so that they have more surface area per unit weight. The, the, uh, Surface area of the vehicle is what determines how much solar energy can be collected because in the, in the real units you'd put solar panels all the way around the outside of the vehicle. And that allows you to gather the power that you need to operate it. And it turns out that a big vehicle just doesn't have enough surface area for its weight, uh, whereas the small vehicles do. And so the small vehicles are able to do things that the big vehicles can't do. In the past, we've only thought about sending one or a few rovers to Mars at one time. In this system, we would want to send a large number. Uh, we would keep them as small as we can. These first prototypes are only about eight pounds apiece. Uh, but if we could, we'd make them even smaller than that, because that would further increase their power to weight ratio and allow them to work uh, you know, even more. It's more like a colony of ants that every ant doesn't do very much, but taken together, they can do a tremendous amount. And so we want them to cooperate, again, very much like a colony of ants, to know which ones need to do what next. 